Hello, my wonderful viewers. Today, we are going to start this episode off with 74 mining. Oh, that's awkward. I need one more. Starting the episode off really strong, guys. Now, this episode, I want to take a little different of an approach to how I film this. There's a lot of places that you can actually mine gold ore in 2005. And to be honest, I don't know the best methods. I don't. There's a lot of options. We're going to explore them in this episode to see how I should carry on mining the remainder of my ore. All right, let's see how much ore we have from 74 mining. Okay, wow, okay, we are at 5.1K and we need a total of 9K. So we still have a decent more to mine. Um, definitely want a nice change of scenery though. And I'm wondering if the Karamja place is still the best. I honestly thought it was, but after a lot of thinking and a lot of fans came up to me and like, Rarg, this place might be better. I decided to do like a full on test to test all these other locations to see how much better Karamja is or how much worse it is. Who knows? We'll just have to find out. Let's, let's dive right into it. So naturally the first place we're going to test is of course Karamja. I've never done an extensive test exactly one hour to see how much I can get. Now there is a spawn there and I will be picking that up. I'm not going for XP necessarily. It's to see how much gold ore I could get in an hour, not how much XP I could get in an hour. So honestly, I'm going to just send it. I'm going to try really hard to be super efficient in all these testing because I really want a super accurate representation of how much gold we can honestly get. I would say the only major downside of this method with banking in Shiloh is that, you know, walking to the rocks is a pretty far walk. Um, the ores themselves, they're very close together. As you can see, it's a nice little horseshoe ring. And actually mining them and looting the one that spawns here is really, really fast. But the walk is pretty brutal. And I'm, I'm finding myself out of run all the time. So yeah, that's probably the only major downside. But when it actually comes to mining the inventory, it's as fast as you can possibly get because you can go around without them actually being all depleted. It's very, very rare when that happens. And the hour is complete. We're actually a few minutes past because I did want to complete the inventory, but what I'll do is I'll take the total time, divide it into an hour, then take the amount I mine, divide that by the number I got so I can get the total hourly rate. And also for every test, I will be keeping all the gems. I just feel like as an Iron Man, it'd be really weird to drop them. Of course, no matter where I'm mining gold, the rate's going to be the same unless I pop out a charged glory, but we all know I'm several levels away from getting that. So that's not going to happen anytime soon. So yeah, all tests will include gems being banked as well but the verdict is for shiloh village banking mining in karamja we can get 271 gold ore per hour and the next method is going to be mining in the same exact location although instead of banking over in shiloh we are going to be banking in the ardune south bank with using ardune tellies now i think this one will be a little faster but the biggest downfall i can think of is that you know it's two extra inventory spots are going to be filled up but i want to test every method i possibly can and see which one will be best. So we're only about 12, 13 seconds past the 60 minute mark. So we're just going to call that exactly 60 minutes. And uh, yeah, let's see how many gold ore we got using the teleport method with our dune while still mining in Karamja. Holy shit, guys, 273 mined. It is pretty much exactly the same. The thing is with mining gold ore, sometimes you could be mining one for like 30 seconds and sometimes you could be mining it for a game tick, you know? Um, so the variance is just way too small to say one is necessarily better than the other. I'm honestly just going to consider these equal. But yeah, with the teleport method, even with filling up two extra inventory spots, they tend to be the exact same. And our next test, we have the crafting guild. For this method, we're going to be walking up from Falador, teleporting to bank. Um, the one major downfall from this, of course, is that, you know, three inventory spots are taken up from runes, but the banking is honestly super, super simple. So another problem with this method is also that you run out of rocks pretty quickly. I mean, it's not super common, but sometimes you do fire around the circle a lot faster than it could spawn. Now, of course, I could quick hop, and of course, there's no 30-second timer like there was in 2005 to hop worlds. I want to keep this as authentic as possible for the sake of this test, so I will not be hopping worlds. But honestly, guys, it's really fast to get here, so I do think even with the runes in the inventory and the slow spawns, I honestly think that this method might still be a little faster. And thank God for this shortcut right here, because if that didn't exist, I'd have to do the free-to-play method and running through the other side of Falador, pretty much through all of Remington, 
and buy port serum and it honestly at that point definitely would not be worth it and it wouldn't even be testing it at this point nope i'm changing it again i'm changing it again the worst part about this method is seeing everyone use the bank that's literally like six squares away from me right now it's horrible it's horrible all right guys we're wrapping up this trip uh 64 minutes in total so we'll definitely have to change the calculations a bit let's see how many we mined so in 64 minutes we mined a total of 272 but of course we need to turn that into an hourly rate we do some math 254 an hour it is actually slower than both methods on karamja wow honestly i thought this one was faster i really did but it's definitely not but we have one more method to test and this one we need to take ourselves over to Kilzagram. But actually first, there's a decent amount of quests I'm going to need to complete to do this. So uh, it's quest time, fellas. So ultimately the quest that we need to complete to access the mine that we want to test is between a rock. And in order to do that is Dwarf Cannon. Dwarf Cannon itself is also just a really good quest to have done. I mean, eventually I would like to think I might have some cannonballs in order to do some Slayer with to really speed it up. Honestly, guys, get ready. This, this little dude, this little dwarf dude has the funniest chat head. Like, look at that hairstyle. Look at him in game. Like, what is that on your head? What kind of gel do you use, bro? Like, I fucking need that. Look at, look at him. <laughs> His little legs. And there's the quest complete. One quest point, 750 crafting XP. But the best part is we can make cannonballs and use a dwarf cannon. Um, it is 750k. I do have the funds. I'm not going to get it now. I'll probably just buy it when I need it. I'll probably have 750k laying around. That's not the hard part. Getting a lot of steel bars is... Um, but yeah, we will worry about that when we get to it. Next on the list, though, is Between a Rock. And we have all the requirements for it. So, uh, guys, let's do it. I absolutely love how this guy just kind of wants to fire you out of a cannonball with some really weird-looking helmet. And you're just like, yeah, put me in. I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, let's be honest, guys. You're going to snap a neck. You die. But uh, not Rarg. Rarg's like, yeah, shove me in that cannon. Sitting comfortably? Hell no. Look at my fucking little head stick out. <laughs> I don't even fit. That was cake. Why is my helmet on the ground? Do I just talk to him and that's and that's quest complete? It was two quest points, 5k defense, 5k mining, 5k smithing, and a rune pickaxe. As if I didn't already have one, but an extra one can't hurt. Some decent XP. And uh, yeah, awesome guys. We get a nice, cool looking helmet as well. And I think to get back in this mine, we just talked to him and he just launches us through this uh, passageway. So I just looked into the fastest way to do this mining method. And honestly, it's like nothing I've ever done before. So you start a trip by basically just talking to him and saying, dude, fire me right into that rock again. Then you spawn in here with all these ore veins and rocks. And then, of course, you just simply mine your full inventory of gold. Then, when you finish, you take off your helmet. You poof on out. So that's why my helmet was on the floor before. I guess that's just part of the quest. So now you got your full inventory of gold. And if you keep coming down just a little bit, you'll find this boatman over here. And he actually takes the gold ore to your bank. But there's a catch. There's a catch. He takes 20% of all the gold you mine. But if you do the Creature of Frankenstein quest and you get a Ring of Karos, it reduces it to 10%. Now that number rounds up. So if you mine 28, I guess in this case I'll mine 27 because I do have to take the helmet off. So I'll have the helmet plus 27 gold ore. So he'll take 3 of the 27 ores that I mine. But honestly, guys, this is why I love 2005 so much. You never see people mining gold unless it's through the mother load mine. And this is just one of the weirdest ways to mine gold. Maybe it's not the best method. Maybe the Karamja method's better. That's why I'm doing all this testing. But just knowing that this was an option of high level gold mining back in the day, it's still just a really, really crazy thought. But guys, this leaves us with one last thing to do before we test this, and that is to get the Ring of Karos from the Creature of Frankenstein quest. Do we have all the requirements? We do. I totally forgot this was a thing. The Creature of Frankenstein quest unlocks probably the most iconic 
2005 training area, at least in my case, I know a lot of people can agree with this. Experiments are level 25 with 100 hit points, and this place in 05 was literally crawling with people, just camping spawns, or camping to spawns, because I think that was kind of the meta back then. I'm not 100% sure, but it's such a shame to see this place dead when it used to be such an iconic place back in the day. Of course, now there are a million better places to train. This place is so outdated, but for 05 standards, it was pretty good and especially with the meta for slayer now everyone knows slayer is kind of the option when it comes to training your skills because you get money you get your slayer up and it's just the overall best way to pretty much train your account um so with a much simpler mindset back in 2005 this place was just crawling with people i mean i know right now i only have a pickaxe because I'm, I'm in the middle of a quest right now but uh just killing these guys is bringing back so much memories especially fighting for spots and trying to get the experiment over somebody else oh good times guys i really hope you guys can relate to this one and nobody liked this experiment because this one's actually part of the creature of frankenstein quest and it doesn't follow the same rules as a level 25 with 100 hp um but i can tell you guys right now that i will definitely be training here on this account the only reason is for nostalgic factor see this account i go like 50 percent for progression 50 percent nostalgic factor um, so even though it's not the most efficient, I can tell you right now that I will be getting some levels here just to relive old times. I think I was supposed to stay in there actually for the quest shit. This has to be the ugliest fucking thing in RuneScape I've ever seen. Look at his right arm. Like it looks like a freaking limp noodle, dude. Are you feeling okay? No, he's not feeling okay. Come on, Lost in 2005. Why are you even asking that question? Look at him. Look at his legs. His knees aren't that good looking though. I gotta be honest, bro. I got better knees. I'm sorry. I'm I'm so dumb. I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but I got two quest points, 1,000 thieving XP. Uh, we got to 54 thieving, which is really nice. And also we got the ring when we pickpocketed him to finish the quest. Now I'm a little scared. I need to activate this ring by doing the Garden of Tranquility quest. If I have to do it, it's not the worst thing in the world because to complete 2005, I will need to do that quest anyway. Um, but yeah, let's check it out and see if this works. If not, then we will actually have one more quest to do and then we can get our final gold mining test in. So I was just like, screw it. I'm going to do Garden of Tranquility anyway because I had to do it. And literally in like the second part of the quest like i'm a few minutes in at most and it's already enchanted um yeah awesome I and mean, as much as i want to do the testing i really just want to finish this quest now because i got all these materials so we're still gonna bang it out yo guys serious thought what if the tool leprechaun doesn't actually store tools he's just an absolute tool like a dick and nobody likes him so they call him the tool leprechaun I mean, it's just a thought. So as a kid, I always saw people fishing in this well. And I was always thinking that it was like some sort of fish until I actually did the quest in like 2009 or something. Uh, but yeah, pretty nostalgic moment for me right here. I always wondered what the hell people were doing. Don't do it. Don't do it, PK Master. No, don't kill Bob. Don't kill Bob. Oh my God, look at him. And that's the quest complete. We have two quest points, 5K farming, XP, some seeds, and a super compost potion. Not bad. That got me to 35 farming, which is pretty cool because I hate freaking farming. I know how much you guys know that. Um, but yeah, honestly, I just wanted the Ring of Karos. A, this is another quest complete, a little closer to all the quests complete on the 2005 account. Um, but now we can officially do the gold ore mining test in Kildegrim. Okay, first inventory. Let's see if this works. Let's. I gotta charm him, I think. Seems a bit expensive. 24? So out of 27, I get 24. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's do that one hour test and see if it's better. Right guys, so it's been 61 minutes in total. Don't worry, we will adjust our calculations accordingly. So the the hour test is done and it's now time to check how many we've mined in one hour. And honestly, I have no idea off the top of my head if this is faster or not. I want to say roughly it's going to be about the same speed as all the others, but I'm really curious to know if this one has the slight edge over all the other methods. So after some calculations, it turns out that this is actually the slowest method of all the testing I've done, coming out at, at around 237 gold or mined per hour. Now, the main reason why I think this is just simply because the rocks are way too far spaced out. It is by far the fastest banking out of all the methods, but the rocks are just so farly spaced apart, and the dwarf takes three every single inventory. So 
Truthfully, in the amount I mined, it probably was pretty close to all the other ones, but every inventory, the dwarf did take three of them, leaving me at only 24 per inventory, and that definitely takes a hit in the total amount. But 237 gold ore is deposited in my bank in that hour, so that's the number we want to go for. We're not looking at total ore mine, we're looking at total ore bank, so we can get 9k for some crafting XP. So after the four tests that we've done in the three different locations, but four different methods, Two of the methods we've done were actually in the same mining spot in Karamja. So out of the four different methods that we've done, the Karamja methods, both of them, no matter the teleport method or banking at Shiloh, they're both incredibly similar, 271 versus 273. So those are the methods that I'm going to be doing. Personally, I like the Shiloh method. It's virtually the same. So that is what I'm going to be doing in order to get the remaining ore that I need to get 70 smithing on the account. Now that is actually going to wrap up the video, guys. But before I turn off the recorder, I just want to show you guys the amount of ore I have in the bank. I did a lot of mining behind the scenes and we are at 7,267 gold ore mined. We are getting really close to that nine k and then we're going to go right for that 70 smithing and then that could be a lot of crafting gains and i'm not sure exactly how i'm going to use the gold ore to get the crafting gains so next episode is going to be pretty exciting on however i decide to handle that because you know good levels are starting to come in our total level is shooting up we're only at 1380 right now which keep in mind is a lot higher than normal for a 1380 account today because there are two skills that i can't train and both those skills are relatively fast um and i have a few low skills like 35 farming which i could definitely get up pretty easily but thank you so much for watching guys i really appreciate it as always and i hope to all catch you in the next one take it easy